I'm tired, I'm hungry, it's the middle of the night, and I don't want to hear this anymore. Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by, once again coming at you for one of my famed movie slash Blu-ray reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the movie in Blu-ray of Dolly Dearest from 1991, starring Denise Crosby, Sam Bottoms, and Rip Torn. This movie was a direct-to-video movie as far as I know. It came out in, I don't know if it came out in 91 or if it was made in 91, but it came out in the early 90s, and I happen to have the original VHS here. It came out in the video stores in the early 90s and was distributed by Vidmark Entertainment on VHS. And as I said in my news snippet, news update video regarding the upcoming Blu-ray release of this title that I did a couple months ago, um, I saw this title relatively early after, you know, not long after it came out, and obviously I would come across the original VHS previously viewed from a video store at some point, and I always liked the cover. Um, it's just, I just like the, the reds and just the painting thing and the font of Dolly Dearest and stuff. There's one of the spines, other spine. Top, back, really a cool VHS cover and packaging all around. So as I said, I saw this not long after it came out on VHS in the early 90s, and of course I would go on to find the uh, you know VHS previously viewed from a video store, and it just happened like, I don't know, it was one or two years ago I came across this title on Prime Video of all places, and I hadn't seen this movie in a long, long, long time, and I actually revisited it at the time, was it one or two years ago, and I was just like, wow, you know, that was, I, I remember this movie, and because I didn't, I don't know, I didn't think that much of it when I was a kid, um, but obviously when I came across the previously viewed VHS, I couldn't pass it you know, pass it up being a huge movie fanatic, and how often do you come across a VHS of Dolly Dearest, but uh, I remember, you know, being a teenager, not being too blown away by the title, but as an adult, when I saw it a year, a year or two ago, I'm like, you know what, this is kind of cool and kind of atmospheric, and I kind of like the Mexican atmosphere to it, or uh, all that kind of stuff, and when the news came, you know, not long ago that Vinegar Syndrome was going to be putting out a Blu-ray, I was like, oh wow, it's cheap enough. I might have to jump on it. Turns out I got it for like 22 bucks or a little less than $22. And I thought that was cheap enough to just go for it and, you know, get the Blu-ray of this and support Vinegar, Vinegar Syndrome and get a Blu-ray um, of this movie. And I always kind of like how it looked, so I thought, well, even on VHS it looked kind of good. So I'm like, I'm, you know, Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray, it ought to look amazing. But the premise of this movie is at the very beginning there's like this little mining little mine operation where this older guy, this, you know, in this safari gear or whatever is doing this stuff in this little mine area in Mexico. It's like no passe, says on the sign, and this older guy, you know, presumably some kind of professor or some kind of scholar or some crap is, you know, he probably shouldn't be down there by himself or whatever at night, but he's working in this little mine and he's, you know, got this pulley thing around something and he's like this stone door and he's taking you know devices to it and, and you know hammering and prying on this door and he goes back to this pulley machine turns it on and you know it's like he's trying to pull off this stone door of this you know whatever this is this this you know old historic freaking burial place chamber or whatever the hell he's looking into and the thing, I don't know, it looks like it's burning out the pulley and then it just all of a sudden the door just blows off and, you know, flies across, you know, the the area and lands on the guy and it's like, we see this kind of cool, I mean, it's, you know, let's face it, if a teenager saw this now, they'd be like, oh, that's lame, but it's kind of a cool, for a low-budget movie in the early 90s, little just red animation of like this evil entity coming out of the, you know, the mine, and there's this, P this kind of a POV shot, and it's like these cool little, I mean, they do a cool little animation of this evil, you know, I think it's like a red, kind of an evil looking animation, just, you know, whatever light coming out of the, the thing, you know, the, the thing that the guy probably was trying to pry open and subsequently blew off and stuff, and, you know, that, you know, does, you know, starts the opening credits and the Dolly Dearest, you know, title and stuff like that. So the premise of this movie is this American family, you know, husband, wife, and da little daughter and, you know, teenage son are going down from L.A. to Mexico. It looks like they're just uprooting and moving down there to basically take over this 
this toy factory in Mexico with me, you know, that made these Dolly Dearest dolls. And, then, you know, the name of the doll in the movie is Dolly Dearest. Just like, you know, the good guy doll from Child's Play or whatever, Dolly Dearest. And they go down there to take over this business. I guess the, the Mexican woman or whatever who had been making these dolls has recently, you know, passed on or passed away. And for some reason, Dad, in the, you know, brought, uprooted the family and bought the business to go down there and, and you know, take over the toy factory and, and resume, you know, he's, I, obviously he hopes to make a good or wise business decision, you know, um, basically pick, you know, buying this, um, this business and continuing to make the Dolly Dearest dolls. And, you know, the family goes, you know, I think the dad takes the kids into the factory. It's a little more run down and ramshackle than he was hoping for when they go in and look around. But when they're looking around, the daughter, I think, ends up coming across like some completed, maybe three or four completed Dolly Dearest dolls that are like under this blanket or this sheet or whatever to keep dust off them. She's like, Daddy, can I have one? Okay. You know, pick which one ever you like. Oh, thank you, Daddy. I'm going to love her, all, you know, so good or all night or whatever the hell she says. So, you know, that's basically where, you know, looking over the factory and stuff, when they go, when they arrive in Mexico to take it over, they uh, come across the dolls. And, you know, that's how, you know, one of these dolls, um, but basically at the beginning of the movie, when that evil entity is, is crawling along the ground, we can kind of see it go under the door or something like that. Uh, into this what would turn out to be this factory so I guess the you know basically this mind thing where this evil spirit was living in this you know whatever this underground burial site or whatever was is just not far from the factory so when the evil you know burst out of the the underground burial site or whatever it went right into the you know closed down factory and possessed these Dolly Dearest dolls oh no so early on into the movie, this girl spazzes out when a priest comes and like to like bless the house. You know, they they actually live in a pretty swanky uh, house there in Mexico or whatever, and they've got this Mexican woman who's like the housekeeper, and she calls a priest to come bless the house, and like the daughter's reacting all violently, and as they're approaching the house in the car, as the priest is blessing, and she's like ah ah ah. You know, just spazzing out, and you know, Denise Crosby's the mom. She's like, "Oh my gosh, what's going on?" And she, you know, the, she, the little girl, kind of gives this Mexican woman, and you know, she's holding the doll, and gives this Mexican woman an evil look. And Mexican woman, of course, is you know, kind of being like a religious person or whatever, is sensing the evil, and you know, in the girl or, or whatever, you know, just has this uneasy feeling about. The girl so not long into the movie you know this this girl having you know not long after having you know picked a doll or whatever is spazzing out and acting up and you know the denise crosby mom and stuff doesn't really know why so in this movie in their swanky kind of mexican home or whatever there's this kind of cool playhouse in the back backyard where um it makes you wonder if this was just there or if they built it for the movie or whatever but uh, this kind of cool playhouse that plays a little bit of a part in the movie early on where the girl of course goes back you know back there and hangs out with Dolly in the playhouse and early on in the movie at night there's this funny shot where Denise Crosby looks looks out at the playhouse at night and she can see two silhouettes like walking around you know one's the daughter and one's the doll and I don't think she ever really thinks you know anything of it it's just kind of weird like wouldn't you and I think she goes back into the playhouse to see what she's doing at that point and I don't remember if she asks like I thought I saw two people in here but I don't think she mentions that it's just like why wouldn't she wonder like why there were two separate shadows walking around well this is so funny but obviously you know very much with like child's play and stuff like that you know the little girl says that oh the dolly's saying stuff or telling me things and this and that and oh my gosh oh yeah another thing that's going on is this girl's drawing like you know bloody kind of gory pictures of this and that or whatever and mom's like well you know what do you what are you drawing here and she's like i don't know i don't i don't know if she says you know dolly shows me things or i don't know what but regardless you know now that the girl is of course unbeknownst to everyone else but the viewer you know the the girl's being you know not necessarily well kind of maybe not possessed but manipulated by this evil you know demonic doll possessed doll or whatever so the the kind of cool thing about this versus child's play is the fact that you know child's play is just some you know serial killer or whatever put into a doll where this one is more hardcore because it's like not just like a 
you know, a soul of some just, you know, bum, you know, serial killer, it's like evil incarnate is possessed this doll. So if you want to look at it this way, this movie in that aspect kind of, uh, you know, surpasses Child's Play in that one aspect of just being more like, more evil, if, if you will. Obviously, this movie doesn't really hold a candle to Child's Play, but I'm talking about the original Child's Play, of course. But uh, if you want to look at it in those terms, it's like, you know, whereas just some Lakeshore Stranglers possessing the doll in Child's Play, you've got pure evil possessing Dolly Dearest. So early on in the movie, of course, the rift between the daughter and the housekeeper, Mexican housekeeper woman, is just, you know, it's just, the, the, t the tensions are rising and she pushes plates out of her hands and all this and that, and housekeeper ends up saying, you know, I don't think I'm really good for this uh, you know, this family or this position, I think I'll be leaving and you can find someone else or whatever. So obviously I think that night, I think, um, I think it seems like mom and dad are both gone. And that night, you know, the, the, the housekeepers, for some reason, lured down to the basement or something like that. I think she sees like Dolly go in, into the, someone sees, as the housekeeper who sees Dolly go into the, I don't know, who, who the hell cares? So what ends up happening is, the housekeeper ends up, I don't know, being hearing noises or something and lured down to the basement where I think she thinks the noises are the young daughter when of course it's Dolly running around and uh, of course Dolly in a, in a relatively cool scene ends up killing the housekeeper. It's like a kind of a two-part kill where she's first scared and then, you know, she's, I don't know, I don't know if she's, I can't even remember. I know this the kill is kind of a two-parter where she might, I don't know if she gets stabbed or just scared and kind of goes and falls in a tub of water and Dolly like pulls these lights down and throws it into the, the thing and electrocutes the woman and stuff. So I was just watching it again recently. I was like, oh, that was kind of a cool two part. I remember it was somehow it was like a two part death where it was either a scare or, a, you know, and or stabbing to cause her to fall into the thing or, or something like that. And then just being like, oh, kind of impressed when it was like a second part of the lights being torn down and thrown in there. It was just kind of a a fun little kill of the uh, the Mexican uh, housekeeper woman, and of course, since she was on her way out anyway, the oh no, actually, dad comes home and uh, discovers the which is kind of realistic. You know, usually the the body just disappears and you don't know what the hell happened, but dad would actually come home and end up finding the body of the Mexican housekeeper just in the frickin' you know where she died in that thing of water or whatever. So that's kind of realistic compared to a lot of times what happens in these kind of movies. So, of course, this movie's big, you know, huge star, if you will, in the movie is Rip Torn, who's got, you know, part here, part there, you know, listening to the Denise Crosby, or watching the Denise Crosby interview, she mentions that, you know, he'd go in and out of Mexican uh, accent while he's acting, and it's like, I watching it, I never heard, like, barely any of him trying to do a Mexican accent, as a matter of fact, I never, you know, ever, ever since I saw this movie, every time I watch it, I never think of him as being... I guess in the movie he's supposed to be playing a Mexican guy or something. I don't know if they even darkened his hair, but I mean, watching the movie, you don't think he's he's a Mexican guy. He's just an American guy. So it, it, it's just if they were actually going for this guy, Rip Torn's character, to be some kind of Mexican, you know, professor, archaeologist guy, they really screwed up because he doesn't sound Mexican like at all. Maybe one point, maybe one spot or something like that, he might have a slight smallest little bit of an accent or trying to get one but anyway not much one of one at all but you know Rip Torn obviously being the probably the biggest star in this movie at the time doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of you know screen time in the movie but he ends up being the guy who comes to take over the you know the exploring of this archaeological a lot archaeological you know what I'm trying to say this old ancient burial ground underground chamber thing and you know the brat kind of yeah I gotta admit the kids the kids in this movie are pretty good you know the young girl and the teenage son and stuff and the teenage son is kind of like the cross between a nerd and some kind of you know a nerd who thinks he's cool because he knows stuff. I mean I guess that's what nerds are but you know this nerdy kid who wears glasses and stuff but he's you know he's he doesn't come across as completely all completely nerdy and stuff but this kid you know, once he realizes that right next to, and right basically just next to the his dad's, you know, Dolly Dearest toy factory is this old excavation, he of course goes in there even against the, you know, people's, you know, suggestions or orders to stay away because it's dangerous and stuff. He pokes his way in there and 
kind of ends up finding Rip Torn at, you know, at the same time Rip Torn's character is going through, you know, looking at the area and stuff, and he's like, well, you know, Rip Torn tells him to get out of there, and he's like, okay, but you're going to need my help to go back in there. There's a really thin, you know, small area, which only I can, you know, get through, and he kind of wiggles, squirms his way into, you know, being able to help Rip Torn momentarily, you know, kind of explore the underground you know, burial, ancient burial chamber or whatever. So, you know, in a small way, kind of throughout the maybe midpoint of this movie, this kid is kind of, you know, coercing his way in to be able to help Rip Torn, you know, Rip Torn's character, you know, look look at the, uh, the ruins and explore them. So one of the cool things about this movie that stands apart from the early Child's Play movies is because it's not one soul possessing one doll, it's like evil just incarnate or whatever just came out of a, you know, a tomb or whatever and just went into this toy factory, which means all the dolls that were left over, I don't know if it's four or five or whatever that were made and not packed up for sale or never sold or anything, they're all possessed. So it's not like, it's not just like one doll, so all the dolls are possessed, you know. And uh, that's kind of cool because there's this scene where this, you know, more heavy set, you know, younger, more heavy set Mexican factory worker guy is, you know, alone at the factory after the guy who owns it left and he's making some burritos or something. And, you know, this is another cool scene with the dolls. And this is the first one where <clears throat> we actually see them like more than one are alive and is the kind of gang up on them. And this scene is kind of cool. And the special effect where his hand actually gets uh you know sewn at, caught under the sewing machine and gets stitches in his hand and it's just like oh my god even as a kind of a veteran horror movie watcher you know when you see that and see a guy's hand get caught under the sewing machine and get sewn threads into his hand it's like oh that's kind of gross and in the movie i was watching it because he falls down and, and just kind of goes oh and blood comes out of his mouth i was like okay that was cool and all but why is he you know he died from his getting his hand sewn and blood comes out of his mouth, and for a while I'm like, why the hell did he even die? And it turns out later on they say he died of a heart attack. I'm like, well, I can see that, but I mean, when you have a heart attack, does blood come out of your mouth? I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't know a whole hell of a lot about that kind of stuff, but I don't necessarily think that's possible. If it's possible, feel free to let me know in the comments if it's possible or common at all for blood to come out of your mouth after you, you know, suffered from, you know, or died from a heart attack. It just seems a little goofy. And, Whatever, but, um, you know, that, that quote-unquote kill scene was kind of cool. It seemed like there was a little bit of shenanigans leading up to it and stuff with just all these dolls just, you know, running around, you know, toying with them and all this and that kind of stuff. So that was a kind of a cool Dolly Dearest kill scene. It wasn't really a kill scene. It was a sew, sew your hand scene, and then he died of a heart attack, I guess. So obviously as the movie winds down, uh, Denise Crosby character, <clears throat> who's the mom, goes to this, you know, religious place or whatever, this woman, you know, this woman, I think was the sister, was she the sister of, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, she, she, Denise Crosby gets some info from both Rip Torn character and also some religious woman at some religious place about the evil, the, the, the actual, they, you know, people, I guess when they were digging around in this area, they thought they were Mayans, but it's not a Mayan burial ground, it's like Sansia, you know, Rip Torn's character always talks about Sansia, like this evil, you know, devil baby who was head of, body of a baby and the head of a goat and all this stuff who was, you know, evil incarnate or whatever, I don't, I don't know why the baby died, uh, as a baby, you know, the, the goat-headed baby died, but later on towards the end of the movie, Rip Torn actually opens the little tomb in the crypt thing or whatever and sees the, like, oh, it's, oh my god, it's true, sees the, the skeleton of the baby and with the goat head, which is just kind of like, just kind of funny or whatever, so, you know, Denise Crosby does a little digging into it and with Rip Torn's help and this other woman and stuff kind of comes to understand the what's going on, the history of the Sansia and that, that, you know, right across, right next to their little business, their little doll factories, the evil came out of. I don't know if they know that or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not even sure Denise Crosby in retrospect is privy to all the, all of what's going on, but the audience, be, you know, obviously is privy to it. And the end of the, the end of the movie is kind of cool where, you know, of course, Dolly goes, goes amok and, you know, it's like attacking the family. I'm not exactly sure what where what the daughter is doing this whole time, but I know that Dolly Dearest is like attacking, you know, running around and attacking uh, Denise Crosby. And the I, I know that uh, Denise Crosby takes like a shotgun or a rifle, 
rifle, it's double, yeah, whatever the hell it is. It's one of those double, I think it's a shotgun, double barrel shotgun off the wall. And as you know, the, the kid actually ends up with it, the teen kid, and blows the doll out, doll through the door, which is kind of cool. And I think the kid even says, like, you know, take this bitch or some kind of, you know, quote unquote swear word or whatever. And you're kind of like, you know, if you were watching in the theater, you'd probably be like, yeah, man, there you go. There might be some cheers there if you were watching this showing of this like at a some kind of retro you know celebration of this movie or whatever people would be cheering like yeah man the kid who's got the glasses shoots it out through the door or whatever and uh, you know i remember the the scene with you know because towards the end of the movie of course you know the dolly dearest actually kind of becomes more you know animatronic and making faces one thing i will say is that the the voice they have for dolly dearest is kind of stupid it's like this de demonic kind of scary sounding voice or whatever. Maybe it would have been a little better if it was just some innocent girl voice, but maybe that wouldn't have made sense. I don't know. I mean, a possessed doll by evil Sansia spirit. I mean, you know, freaking dead baby with a goat head, I guess, doesn't really make sense anyway. So when I was just recently watching the Blu-ray, I remember thinking, you know, yeah, this, this end scene at the house with, you know, Dolly going crazy and, like, attacking Denise Crosby and the sun blowing the doll out the door, it was kind of fun. And then I was like, gosh, uh, you know, but I was like, oh, I hope that's not the end. But it turns out to, there's kind of like two, you know, climactic endings, if you will, because then there's a big climactic showdown, well, maybe not big. Then there's a small climactic showdown at the, the toy factory when, of course, all the Dolly Dearest dolls are uh, running amok and stuff and this and that and of course Rip Torn's character shows up with some dynamite and Dad and Rip Torn just throw dynamite all over and the dolls are you know lit dynamite and the dolls are going and ripping out the fuses and this and that and stuff so they want to just blow up the factory and what a bummer you know you just go down there and uproot and sell everything and you know go buy this same place now you're gonna blow it up it's just like oh man but I guess you know whatever uh, so, I, I can't, you know, I didn't watch this long ago, but it's just like the end is just kind of a blur. I mean, that's basically, I can't remember specifics necessarily, but that's basically the gist of the movie. I remember thinking when I just rewatched it, that it's just like, uh, maybe I kind of propped this movie up a little more than it really deserved to be. I mean, it's not a horrible movie. It's just like when I w just watched the Blu-ray for the first time not long ago, a couple of Day, day or two ago I remember thinking you know it's, it's cool and everything and it's competent and the story is good and the actors are good and just everything's actually good but it's just you know having rewatched it again it's just like yeah it's pretty slow let's face it let's 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 face it this movie is is pretty slow and you know there's only like I guess if you include the guy getting smashed and crushed by the the the, the stone door to the sarcophagus or whatever at the beginning of the movie. I think there's only like three deaths in the movie and only two dolly kills, which is kind of, you know, just the housekeeper and that Mexican guy at the factory. That's kind of a low death count. I mean, really, if you're doing a horror movie and rated R and you know, <clears throat> another thing is, I mean, I guess you could call Denise Crosby particularly, you know, kind of attractive, but I mean, you know, there's no like, teen, I don't know, it would have been fun to have a quote-unquote teen daughter or something maybe, to, I don't know, I mean, I guess being a heterosexual male, I guess, you know, I guess one of my problems was there's no, like, really, there's not a whole lot of female eye candy, I mean, I guess Denise Crosby was young enough where she is in the movie, but I never really liked that hairstyle that she always sported, like, her entire whole life or whatever, that shorter hair and stuff. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of cliché. Oh, that's another... Oh, you know what? I mean, it was, a, it was a woman who directed the movie, so maybe that's why it was, like, there's no, like, female, you know, eye candy or whatever. But, I mean, I guess Denise Crosby is to a certain extent. But, yeah, I remember, you know, when I just rewatched it, when I watched the Blu-ray, I'm like, yeah, I guess that's... You know, it's a competent movie, but it's, let's face it, it's on definitely on the slow side. I will go as high as two stars out of four stars for Dolly Dearest. Um, as I said, I may have propped it up in, in my, you know, my memory of it or my, what I, how I liked to, you know, think of the movie as being greater than it is. But I do like the, um, just the kind of the Mexican uh, atmosphere it has to it and the, the, you know, I think they pull off the little tomb, the Sansia tomb and all this kind of exploring the tomb stuff well and the idea of the ramshackle factory in Mexico, the dull 
you know, the dull manufacturing ramshackle factory is cool and the swanky house the family lives in and stuff. And, you know, Sam Bottoms, Denise Crosby and the two kids are, and of course, Rip Torn. I mean, they're a, de you know, they're a good cast and everyone does, does well, but, you know, as I said, just watching it again, it's just like, yeah, the movie's a little slow. Now on to my review of the recently released Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray um, of Dolly Dearest, which is absolutely fantastic. As I said, I was able to get it for just a, you know, a few, little bit under $22 or whatever, 21 cent change or whatever. Special features I'll show you on the back, of course, newly scanned and restored in 2K from its 35mm interpositive. Playing with dolls in an interview with lead actress Denise Crosby and then dressing the part in an interview with actor Ed Gale. Reversible cover artwork and English SDH subtitles. Now the, the playing with dolls bit was, it was an interesting, you know, interview with Denise Crosby I thought. And of course she's sporting her, you know, Denise Crosby hair of course. And I didn't know when this, you know, Blu-ray was announced who Ed Gale was. I thought maybe it was this, the kid who played the son or whatever. What's well, actually this guy, this te technically, I guess they, I don't know if they like to be called little people these days. This little person who, you know, basically played some of the acted out scenes from the original Child's Play. You know, there was, see, there were shots in that movie, of course, where there was a little person in Chucky, uh, you know, gear, of course. He played the same kind of thing in, in Dolly Dearest when there was a shot of, for example, Dolly walking into the dollhouse or whatever, or just, you know, shots of the doll's feet going by, or just shots in the background of dolls, you know, the dolls walking around or stuff. It was this little person, Ed Gale, in the role. So both of these interviews are, are pretty, you know, they're pretty decent. I think Denise Crosby's is like 14 minutes, whereas Ed Gale's might be like eight or something like that. You know, it's, it's relatively bare bones. I mean, this maybe that's why the Blu-ray was so reasonably priced because, you know, it's just pretty much movie and a couple interviews and unfortunately no trailer. But um, obviously, oh my gosh, you know, I always thought even on VHS, this movie was a, was a particularly good looking movie. And I think for what I can really see, I mean, it looks like it's almost all filmed in locations and it's not necessarily you know, fake-ass soundstage stuff, and it, it just really has an organic, realistic, it always had had a realistic, organic feel to the way the movie looked, and oh my gosh, the movie looks so freaking good on this Blu-ray release, and I will say that, you know, the darker scenes, the grayness is hev heavy, heavily prevalent, and the, the dark scenes, it looks like it could almost be 16 millimeter, but, you know, they say it's 35 millimeter, but... For you grain people, I'm a grain guy, I like my grain, you've got a lot of grain in the dark scenes, of course, and, you know, the light scenes are, I mean, everything just looks absolutely amazing, the sound shines through in the glorious ultra stereo of the early 90s, I can't really praise the, uh, the Blu-ray enough for just the way it looks, and just the fantastic, you know, two-channel stereo, ultra stereo audio track were absolutely amazing, this was, uh, you know, it might be a slow movie, but I mean, obviously this is just the bit most, you know, the best way and most slam bang way to experience Dolly Dearest now. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I don't regret getting this at all. I'm glad I got it. Um, I'll probably watch it maybe again, not in the not too distant future. Um, it looks absolutely amazing. And it is a quaint little, uh, you know, horror movie. Just, I guess my recommendation would be, you know, when, if you haven't seen it and you're going to buy this Blu-ray or blind buy it or something like that, like that, just keep expectations low that this isn't like a theatrical movie like Child's Play or Child's Play 2. It's a low budget, straight to video kind of horror movie. But, you know, there are a lot worse ones, like the movie I reviewed not long ago, uh, Pinocchio's Revenge. Like this is, this, this movie towers in my opinion, over Pinocchio's Revenge. I mean, just as being like a, just a competent kind of mature uh, horror thriller kind of a movie. Pinocchio's Revenge is just kind of like just a, I don't know, just a bunch of hogwash in my opinion. But this movie at least is, you know, there's there's something going on where it's just like, it's it's competent in, in a lot of the, the aspects of this movie, you know. And as so often is the case with releases like this, you've got a reversible cover art option, you've got the um, option for this cover art, which is, you know, obviously the VHS, original VHS, Bidmark Entertainment cover, or this cover, which I don't really think is particularly that great. I've never actually seen this cover before. Maybe it's a cover artwork that the production company that made the movie came up with. It's kind of funny, the tagline here, a doll with a bad attitude. But I can see maybe the production company coming up with this artwork or something like that and 
you know, Vidmark saying, yeah, that's not really up to par. So then they came up with uh, their artwork, which is definitely a whole hell of a lot better. I mean, that is some really, really great artwork, although it's kind of misleading because I don't know. I mean, I guess that's kind of a knife. It looks like a razor, but I don't know, whatever it is. But I definitely prefer this artwork over this artwork. I mean, this is just like, what? Then it's kind of cool with this release. You actually get a DVD along with the Blu-ray as well. You've got a DVD here with the crappy, what I would regard as the crappy cover art. And then with the good cover art over here, you've got your Blu-ray disc. So I always like it, even this late stage in the game in 2020, when you end up getting a DVD along with the Blu-ray too. I just always think it's like an added bonus. A lot of people might be like, why that this, you know, in this year of 2020, but you know, me being still a DVD aficionado, I think it's kind of cool to have a, a DVD along with the Blu-ray as well. So I guess that'll do it for my movie slash Blu-ray review of Dolly Dearest. As I said, it's it's a relatively, I guess, a movie that's on the slower side, but if you can get past that, it's got, you know, a lot of things going for it for being as low budget as it is. I mean, it's, to me, I'd say that this is, you know, even being as slow as it is, it's still probably better than a lot of movies that have been in the theater recently and, and stuff like that. So if, you know, understanding that it's a slow burn and maybe not the most, uh, you know, biggest body count kind of a horror movie or no, you know, gratuitous female nudity or anything like that, it's still a, a competent, um, you know, straight to video, low budget horror thriller movie, um, you know, I guess. So, I mean, if you feel so inclined to do so, feel free to to give it a shot and thank you very much for watching my video and as always we'll catch you on the next one.